Hello, polar bears. I'm Ruben, the German. Hello, I'm David Varney. I like happy bars. Hi, I'm Kylie Klim. Welcome to In Between the Lines. Polar bears, what's up? New week, new episode. Welcome to In Between the Lines. So we we're going to talk about today, um, the homecoming week, which has passed. We're going to have the teacher of the week, which will be Miss Kano. We will have the hot minute and some interviews and clips from the volleyball game. So stay tuned, make yourself comfortable and enjoy this episode. What's up, dancers? Last week we had our homecoming week. Let's dance ourselves a little through the rundown. Okay. In this very gym, on this very code, the seniors took home the WIN during the Buff Puff volleyball game. Congrats again to you. Let's see what happened on the other days. Oh. On Wednesday, we had our homecoming parade, which started at the Dunkirk Park and came back to the school. After the parade, we had our band and our cheerleaders cheering us on and playing some songs for us around the bonfire. Then after the bonfire, we had our powder puff game where the juniors and freshman girls took home the win, 20 to six, beating the sophomores and seniors. On Friday night, we had our big football game here and we won, of course, 20 to zero. And as well, we revealed our homecoming king and queen, Justin and McKenna. Shout out to you guys, congrats, and uh, that was Friday. This Saturday we had the homecoming dance, and thank you for the student government for setting it up. Hi Polar Bears, um, thank you for the homecoming update. Now I'm here in between the Mona Lisa's with Mrs. Kano. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So, would you um, please give a little introduction about yourself for those people who don't know who you are? I'm Mrs. Kano. Um, I've been teaching art here um, at Hard Northern since 2007, so I've been here for a really long time. And um, when it comes to art, I'd say my favorite thing to do is acrylic painting. Um, I love painting flowers, anything colorful, and uh, just doing things that are bright and make people happy. Do you have a favorite? Artist or favorite like Picasso, Da Vinci, anyone who's like coming up to your mind? Yeah, um, so currently, um, Kahinde Wiley is an artist that comes to mind. He's um, an artist who uh, has a studio in New York and he typically picks people off the street. He loves to find someone dressed in like urban gear or just regular people off the street that he thinks look interesting. And then he paints them in these monumental paintings with a very like Renaissance. Um, floral type background, so he mixes the two genres, and it's really cool. So he'd be my favorite right now. So um, art is, of course, a little bit different in school than like math. We can't just there's not just one right answer, right? Like in math. Um, so how how does it make you feel when you uh, like grade people's art? Uh, is it like do you have like a like some critics, some parts you going on them out, or just is it like very subject subjective or okay. So for me, for every project that we have, I have a rubric that has a list of um, guidelines that the students are supposed to complete, and they're all aware of those guidelines. So first, I just check: did they do this, this, this um, according to the guidelines? And then I always look at um, their behavior in class, the time spent in class. Are they talking with their classmates, or are they actually you know, getting down to the grind and doing the work. Um, are they cleaning up their stuff like they're supposed to be? That's part of their grade. Um, there's always a creativity factor in every project. And of course, you know, um, art is subjective. So you really, you can't take away the, I don't like this or I do like this. So I really try to not grade based on any of those things. Um, I try to just keep it concrete um, facts that I can look at so that no one can say, well, you just didn't like it. You know, I kind of just go with it that way. And speaking of creation, um, if I want to paint something, but I'm a very creative person, mm -hmm. um, do you have any advice to, uh, to give me creation, to give me uh, kind of motivation or yeah. uh, some improvements or I can um, 
I don't know if I want to paint something, but I don't have an idea what I can do. Well, you, you can paint anything. I mean, some artists paint dots, some artists paint lines, some artists paint squares, shapes, you know, things like that. Um, and then some artists really want things to look realistic. So it really depends on what kind of thing you're feeling that day. Um, if you're wanting to do something realistic, you really need to practice. It's just like anything else that you do. Um, you know, we have gifted, gifted athletes, people who are born able to just do things and naturally better. Art's no different. Um, I was born able to, to do this kind of stuff. My mom's good at art. My grandma's good at art. Um, but I practiced a lot. So I would look at objects. I would study their shape. I practiced drawing all the time growing up. I mean, I can remember being like four years old doing this kind of stuff. So I've been doing art forever and I've always been practicing. Um, so if it's something that you really care about being better at, even if you're not great, practice will always help you get better. Look at objects, study their shapes, try to draw what you see. And then at the end of the day, if that's not working out, scribbles are cool too. <laughs> um, and can there be bad art? Or is it just a perspective? I think it's just a perspective, you know, like whatever you like, I may not like. Yeah. It's just a personal choice, I think. Um, there's definitely, I think, beauty in all of the art that I see. Um, it may not be something that I love, but I can appreciate it for its colors or maybe for the technique or maybe for the time spent um, by the artist. So I don't necessarily love everything that I look at, but I can find an appreciation for it. And I think that that's kind of a goal as an art teacher to teach kids to know that it's okay to not like everything, but to look for the positives or um, you know the good things and all of the art. Very strong. Yeah. Um, and is there uh, uh, everything made by an artist, like a big artist, feels like uh, you can paint a circle and buy it for money. Right. So um, did you get the impression that some artists are a little bit overrated or, you know, just like some artists, they, uh, they're just famous. And since they're famous, everything they make art. Right. Is good somehow. Yeah, that's a good question. And we, we talk about this a lot in our class. I think a lot of times it's um, when you have something that's different like that, there's going to be a reaction to it. So if you're the first person to do it, there's a, oh, I can't believe that they're getting away with this. And that, that shock is what creates the value. You know, so it doesn't have to be necessarily anything special as long as it's different and you do it first. It's, you're looking for a reaction. Lots of artists are just trying to get people to view their work and to pay attention to what they're doing. So if you're doing what everyone else is doing, there's nothing to stand out. So it's a, it's a shock value, I think, for a lot of things like that. And then, you know, if you're famous, you can kind of just do what you want. But yeah, that's an interesting thought. And I think art is a lot about also society. It's a lot about society. Yeah. It changes during the years. Yeah. We have like, we look back in like, Visibility paintings were very different. Yep. So, yeah, it's kind of a reflection of right? Absolutely. You didn't used to be able to paint just to paint what you wanted. You had to paint for a king or a queen, or you had commissioned pieces that you had to do. Artists couldn't just go out and really do what they wanted. You know, it was a it was a portrait of a family. It was, you know, studying of animals and plants. Um, and now you can get away with anything. That's anything is art. <laughs> Um, so the last question of the interview, what would life be? I think life without art would be very boring. I, I can just imagine like what these walls look like before and they were all white. When we did our renovation, the walls were all white and people would say, oh, it's like a prison being in here. And then we started, you know, over time, just adding color to bricks and then it turned into murals. And I just kind of relate what art or what life would be like without art kind of to that. It would be boring. and. Um, yeah, I think it'd be really sad. Yes, absolutely. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Up next is the is the game. We're, we're playing um pop trivia with Mrs. Kano. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, so um, just grab her on the card. This is from the '80s. Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, in 1984, Bill Johnson became the first American male to win Olympic gold medal in which winter sport? Um, skiing. Yeah, it's like <laughs> alpine skiing. Skiing. I take that as a win. <laughs> okay. 
the Americans Cub uh, Yanni trophy was retained by America from 1851 until 1933 when they were beaten by Yad representing which country? I have no idea. I don't really follow uh, You want to that? Hint? Sure. Uh, in this country, they have, it's a pretty hot country. We're <laughs> There's lots of hot countries. <laughs> I need a better hint than that. Okay, they have kangaroos. Australia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, I think we're just going to do two questions and uh, skip. All right. Okay. Um, this is the 50s now. Which craze sold over 25 million units in the first four months of 1958? Which craze? Yeah. Okay, it's like it's like a toy. The Slinky. No. Oh, I don't know. Uh, the Hula Hoop. Okay. <laughs> uh, who played the courageous town marshal in the 1952 classic High Noon? Yeah, you got me. 19 faces is too old. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> I want to get it either. Okay. It's uh, Carrie Cooper. Okay, yep. Yeah, don't know who that, that is. I don't think we're getting... It is the 70s now. Um, what is the name of Hong Kong's Poony Feline Sidekick? <laughs> Hello Kitty? No. I don't know. <laughs> His name is like Spot. Yeah, I don't know that. Never even heard of that. Name the Dutch technology company that launched the world's first home video cassette recorders in 1972. Say that again. Okay, so name the Dutch technology company that launched the world's first home video cassette recorders in 1972. Like Sony? No. Is it something like that? It starts with a P. Panasonic? No. Philips. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, next You're is, catching me in all the wrong categories. I don't know this stuff. <laughs> okay, next is the 90s. In a series of free action comedy films, Mike Myers stars as both Dr. Evil and what title character? Um, I know who this is. Austin Powers. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Um, which formal athlete lit the Olympic cultural controversy? <laughs> At the Atlanta Summer Olympics in 1996. He led the what? Uh, the Olympic Andron. I don't know how to pronounce it. At the Atlanta Summit Summer Olympic Olympics in 1993. He was a, he was a boxer, by the way. Muhammad yeah. Ali? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a better one. Okay, this is the 2000s. This one is probably the easiest. Um, you're saying that, but you haven't written me a question, Jeff. They might be hard. Yeah, I mostly don't know. I, I, this is why I actually know. In the animated film Ice Age, what item is the obsession of Scrat the saber tooth squirrel? It's a nut. Yeah. It's like an acorn. Yeah, yeah. Jack Bohr was the lead character in which long running television series? What's his name? Uh, Jack Bohr. Jag? I have no idea. Uh, Apparently 24. Yeah, I didn't watch that. Okay, this is the last two questions. It's from the 60s. Okay. okay. Which superhero raised by Aunt May and Uncle Ben made his debut of Marvel Comics in 1962? Uh, Spider-Man. Yep. What is the nickname of German Scout's neighbor, Arthur Rodri, Rodley, in the... Pulitzer Prize winning novel To Kill a Mockingbird. I have no idea. Uh, boo. Okay. That's her name. <laughs> okay, that's all the questions we asked. Thank you, Mrs. Kano. You're for welcome. Answering. And um, how would you rate the game? I give that game out of 10 being the best, maybe a three, because my questions were skewed. I don't think you were fair. <laughs> I think that you looked for questions you knew I wouldn't know the answer to. So, solid three. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> Name three football players. Uh, Justin Ruffett, Clay Rager, Caden Wood. Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Ten years older or ten years younger? Older. Um, summer or winter? Summer. Favorite pizza toppings? None. Favorite artist? Oh, God. Tom Kurt. Place you want to go? Um, Alaska. Which celebrity would you meet? Drake. Um, favorite, favorite clothes brand? Adidas. Instagram or Snapchat? Instagram. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Google or Bing? Google. Football or basketball? Football. Car or motorcycle? Car. Tennessee or Ohio State? Tennessee. Um, favorite fruit? Apples. Thank you for being on today's Hot Minute. You're welcome. So, that was our second episode. Thank you again, Mrs. Kano and Carter, for being guests on our show. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we apologize if there has been some microphone issues. Uh, we'll try to work on that. But other than that, I'm going to say thank you again and see you next week. Bye.